Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nemo and today we're going to be taking a look at Tom Clancy's The Division and more importantly, the requirements on PC because they were actually just announced to the public not too long ago. So we're going to be covering that and we're also going to be checking out all of the in-game graphics options in the final release of the game. Now there's been a lot of talk about massive downgrading the graphics on The Division from what we first saw at E3 in 2013, which is a strong possibility, but I'm going to leave that topic for when I actually get my hands on the PC beta because as much as I'd like to make that video on the topic. I don't want to judge the game graphically until I'm actually able to play it and take the time to fully analyze the graphics. Now the division is absolutely stacked with options, especially if we compare them to previous titles by Ubisoft. Obviously they don't look nearly as good as the options from GTA 5, but nevertheless it's still a good sign that the PC port might not be completely terrible. But before we dive into all the options, we need to take a look at what it's going to take to fully run this game at the minimum requirements as well as the recommended requirements requirements. Now to start off with the minimal requirements for the operating system, you will need either Windows 7, 8, or Windows 10. So if you have like Windows XP, then don't even think about trying to play this game on PC. It's just not going to work. Next up is the processing power. Now you're going to need at least a Intel Core i5-2400 at at least 3.1 gigahertz or the AMD FX-6100 at 3.3 gigahertz. It needs a bare minimum of at least six gigabytes of RAM, and it also needs either a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 560 or a Radeon HD 7770 or any other GPU with at least two gigabytes of VRAM that is required in order to run this game. Now it also needs a at least 40 gigabytes of space. So if you have to allocate more space on your SSD or your hard drive, then you might want to start deleting other games because this one is going to be pretty big. The beta size is 26 or 27 gigabytes on PC. So be sure to allocate enough space whenever you go to download this game. Now the last two things that it will need is DirectX 10 and of course either a KB mod or a controller of some some sort. I suggest a keyboard and mouse, but if you have a controller and use that thing and another thing that it does not recommend, but, uh, or it doesn't like say that you need, but I suggest, and that's a microphone because there will be proximity chat on the Xbox one. And I believe on all of the rest of the consoles, including PC. So if you are buying this game on PC or you're, you know, playing it on PC, I suggest having a microphone just because the dark zone will be epic with the proximity chat. So from what it looks like, the game is going to be pretty freaking demanding just for the minimum specs. Now, if you don't have the bare minimum, then buy it on a console of your choice, guys. I personally suggest the PS4 just because I'm all PlayStation Nation this time around. But, you know, if you have an Xbox One, play it on that as well. I, I didn't see many issues on the Xbox One, but it might just run a little bit smoother on the PS4. Who knows? It might be the complete opposite this time around. But as far as hardware goes, it's probably going to be playing better on the PS4. Now, for the recommended specs, you will need at least an i7-3770 that clocks at 3.5 gigahertz or an AMD FX-83. 350 at 4 gigahertz. The RAM it recommends 8 gigabytes and for the video card you will need a GTX 970 or on the AMD side of things the Radeon R9 290 but basically any GPU with at least 4 gigabytes of VRAM. Now the operating system, the hard drive as well as the input devices and sound cards are all the same so those things are obviously recommended and they are required to play the division. Okay guys that is all the minimum and recommended specs for the PC version. Now we're going to go into the graphics options that are in the game currently. Now we're just going to really quickly run through this list. I'm not going to go in depth with them because you can find that all on Google. I'm just going to say what's in the game and what we have the ability to modify. So we got V-Sync um, and then we got the frame rate limit, the shadow quality. We got the shadow resolution, the spot shadow count, the spot shadow resolution, the contact, lots of shadows, the contact shadows. We got the post FX AA, the temporal AA, the sharpen image percentage, uh, the particle detail, the enable wind affected snow, the volumetric fog, reflection quality, local reflection quality, subsurface scattering, anisotropic filtering, parallax mapping, ambient occlusion, depth of field, object detail percentage. We got extra streaming distance, the chromatic abrasion. Uh, we got lens flare and last but not least the vignette effect. So that wraps it up for all of the PC version graphics options. That's a lot of them guys. I was like honestly mind blown to see the 
that there was that many options, especially whenever you look at other previous titles, we got, we got ourselves a lot of options. So hopefully we get more, maybe we can have an actual Ram slider for the GPU like GTA five does, but we're asking a little bit too much. I'm just kidding. I want everything. I want to be able to change this game. So it's perfect for my system. But yeah, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. If you guys did enjoy it or it did help you out in any way, please let me know in the comment section below or by hitting the like button on this video. Thanks again for watching guys. I hope you did enjoy it. And until next time, this has been your boy Nemo and I'm out. Peace. Peace.